I'm back at the Good Shepherd Food Bank now. It's been a week since we went through to check to see if these hives were ready to go into single brood chamber management. And uh, it's the equinox this weekend. So I would say it's going to be ready. I had, say, an average of two frames with eggs, maybe three frames with eggs in each of the upper brood chambers before. By now, a lot of that will be capped brood and there'll be two two frames more with eggs and larvae in them, I should imagine. So I'm imagining there's an, an average of three to five frames with brood in them in the upper brood chambers. Some will have next to none. Some might have a bit more. So those that have le little will get, get a boost from the other colonies as I move frames around. And those that are strong will be trimmed down a little bit so there's no da so the lack less danger of swarming. So let's get on with it and see what we have this time. Now last week this colony had some swarm cells so we split it down some and hopefully did enough to prevent it swarming but we'll see. So all the rest should be relatively straightforward. Doesn't look like it's swarmed, still packed with bees. And this hive, I checkerboarded it. Basically cut out all the queen cells and spread out the combs that had brood in with combs of foundation to minimize chances of swarming. Give them as much room as possible, as quickly as possible. We may as well do both jobs at the same time. situation. While well, we've got queen cups, we don't have queen cells. So that is excellent. So now I've got a brood chamber here full of bees going right across. And what we're going to do now is make sure that the queen is down in the bottom box. So I've got a funnel here. That's going to go on top and we're going to shake the bees out of the top box into the bottom box. I'll be looking for the queen at the same time just to make sure everything is, if I can see the queen, this speed things up. Making sure the queen's not on the frames. So we know the queen hasn't left. And here's the queen, in fact. Marked queen. Green dot. Now, it, as it happens, these queens have been marked in an unusual way. These are not my Saskatraz queens. This is an Italian queen. I've got some unusual markings here. Reason for which they're marked green, I'll not go into right now. But anyway, we have the queen here. So now we know the queen is in this hive. You see her going down in there right now. So now, the job is done. The queen is in the lower brood chamber. 
going to put these back in here. And I actually know I've got a lot of extra sur surplus energy that I can take out of this hive. And I will be putting it into another hive. But first of all, queen excluder. Queen is down below. This can go on. And this colony for the rest of this year is going to be a single brood chamber management. Now, because I've got lots of surplus here, I'm not going to close everything up here, nor am I going to put the honey super on yet. But I've got a honey super for when I'm ready. So, this colony is done for now. I'm going to put the honey super here just as a, a marker, and we'll go on to the next hive, which will not be quite so built up. These hives have grown so much in the last week. This is what I was hoping would have happened. A lot of weight in here. There's already a lot of honey in here. Let's move this over to here. into the sun but should still be okay. Eggs here, so for the queen. Finding the good thing about this process is you don't need to find the queen. It's a fast way of making sure the queen is in the bottom brood chamber. So basically, if you shake the bees out of all these frames and go down below, make sure you get down into this. It speeds everything up enormously because you, as long as you've shaken the bees down into the super below, you know that if the queen was up here, she's now downstairs. And this way, we don't have to worry at all 
about the uh, about where the queen is. If we find her, then we can stop. We don't have to shake the rest of the frames. We just put her downstairs and everything is done. But if we don't, at least we know she's not upstairs. That's the main thing. We know she's not upstairs. She's not upstairs, she's below the queen excluder. So she's in the brood chamber. So far, I found less than half a comb of uh, brood up here. Uh, it's almost all honey. So this might be a good hive to swap because strength-wise it's not as strong as that one. So I've got no brood up here and in the long run that colony is going to be much stronger because it's going to have, it's got so much more brood. And so I'm kind of looking towards swapping a frame or two of honey into that hive and put it brood into this one. So the queen's been crowded out of this hive, this uh, upstairs, so just filled it up with honey. Ten combs built. The super is done. Now I know the queen is down here. balance the strength out a little bit. I'm going to take a couple of combs from here. Mostly honey and foundation. I'm going to swap them for some brood in this one. And this hive will have some energy taken off it. And the other one will have energy added to it. And the beauty is, we know the queen's not in here, so it's going to be a quick matter of just moving things along. Frame of emerging brood here. frame of brood. Not that this hive was weak. Now we know it's got the strength. Okay, so now that I've thinned this down a little bit, I can put the honey super on. Then I'm going to come straight up here and start filling this up too. So now we've got a good strong population of bees in this, this colony. We've got a good strong population of bees in that colony. So that's ready for honey super as well. These honey supers will fill up fast because they're all drawn comb. So as opposed to having to build all the comb, which I've had to do previously, they're going to be able to go straight up into here and fill these frames up with honey. So we've got a nice honey flow on right now. That's two done.
try looking down from here and see what it's like from this angle. of honey. Lots of honey there. These bees have had a nice honey flow. The progress in these supers in the last week has been fantastic. They were had a lot of the combs partially built before. The, the average comb was like this before, partially built, and this this one that's only got undrawn foundation on the outside frames. And I'll need a spare box. Eggs up here, so the queen is upstairs just watching for her. More eggs and eggs. Developing larvae and eggs. Some capped brood. So the older larvae in the middle. This was all just eggs when I was looking at it last week. We have a frame of eggs here. I'd like it to be where we'd find the queen. Yeah, just eggs here. And eggs over here. Lots of honey, but lots of eggs. Here. So I guess the queen is probably downstairs. Mm. And finally, again, just a bit of foundation still being built here. This one wasn't quite built by it. There we go, straighten it out.
these colonies really are exploding in strength now. We're just about to totally explode. So we've already got a deep super, which is possibly two thirds full of, well, maybe half full of honey on average. That honey super will probably fill this week. Be surprised if I don't need a second honey super tomorrow. I mean, next week. opportunity to strengthen these two. Still gonna do the same thing. Treat the whole yard the same. Right now. I just may not put a honey soup on this one. In fact, I will not do. And this four frame is just getting started on this four frame. is roughly what the average super was like last week. So we can see how fast they can move this along. There's nothing wrong with this hive, it's only a week behind those. Honey super for this. Let's see how this one looks. Thank you. 
between the last couple. Starting to get eggs in this here. So what's going to happen with this is that the, we're shaking the bees down into the lower brood chamber, but those nurse bees will come straight up through the queen excluder to look after this brood and all the developing larvae. And as that larvae grows and emerges, it'll be backfilled with honey. So this, which was a brood chamber, becomes our first honey super. And in doing so, I also get a whole deep super of drawn comb made, which is great. And in fact, this, uh, these brood chambers will probably be full of honey with no brood in, in them in about three and a half weeks, maybe four weeks. A little bit of trimming needed here. be exposed I'm looking for mites which I do not see
So just to recap, what's going to happen now? The queen has been pushed from occupying two supers down to just occupying the one. Now she's going to make full use of those ten combs down there. Uh, within a few weeks, this is just going to be purely, virtually only brood. The outside two combs might have a bit of honey, a bit of pollen, but the other eight will be full of brood, wall to wall. The brood that's in this hive will be serviced by the worker bees that come up through the queen excluder and fed and looked after. All that brood will emerge within the next 24 days and the bees will backfill it with honey. It's already a third to a half full of honey right now. And that honey super will probably be filled over the course of the next week or two, by which time I'll probably put another one and maybe even another one on. So as long as the honey flow continues, we're going to have a lot of honey developing from a single brood chamber there. Uh, it will make looking after them a lot easier. With all the brood confined to the bottom, when I do my mite treatments, I'll only need to be treating the, a single box of brood. All the brood concentrated in one place makes the mite treatments much more effective. Also, when it comes to taking everything off, it'll be a lot simpler as well, because now there'll be no brood in any of the, in any of the honey supers once that, this lot of brood has emerged. So I'll get a few more done now, and uh, I'll stop recording right now and get on with my work. Then we'll come back to it. Do the last couple of the 21 hives here. Hot and exhausted. I think I'm finding on average three to five frames of brood upstairs and uh, 20 to 30 pounds of honey. I'd say that uh, on average eight of the ten frames are built. So our timing is terrific just at the point at which they're ready to be condensed down to a single brood chamber. And from here on in, although they'll have plenty of brood and bees, they're also going to make a lot of honey now. So with honey flow on now, you can tell every time you shake a comb it rains nectar out of the frames. Whenever you shake a comb in the daytime, and it looks like a lot of wolfers flying out that tall nectar, means you've got a honey flow. We've got some hives with more than five frames of brood here. So the ones that are having, let's say, more than four frames of brood, I'm taking one or two out and putting them into the hives that only have one or two frames of brood. So, this is an example of a strong one. And this way, we equalize the strength of the colonies, and uh, there's less chance of swarming. It's just easier to manage when they, they all need the same thing being done to them at the same time. three frames of brood in these three smaller colonies over here so I've already been through each need one each could do with one Also, make these colonies strong enough to put a honey super on.
quite enough any supers today, so these two will go without. And I think that last one may need a honey super, I'm not sure. I've got one honey super left. Let's close these up. Check this last hive first. Okay, about 40 or 50 pounds of honey in there. I am ready to go in the pool. It's about 85 degrees. And I am soaked through. Ready to drop. Even honey capped right out to the edge here. These bees are, have a nice little honey flow going on here. I'm checking these bees I leave. I don't take every single bee off the frame. I'm just making sure that the bees I do leave behind don't have the queen amongst them. Get about four frames So we've got, still got about four or five frames of brood here that will all emerge and become totally full of honey within the next three weeks or so, by which time they'll have already filled this honey super up. Pretty darn sure. Unless we don't get any rain. If we don't get any rain, 
the sunny floor was like last year or come to an end in about a week, ten days. Right now, we get the rain that they're forecasting on Saturday, sunny floor might go on for two to three weeks. And if we get more rain, maybe four to five weeks. When it goes like that, hives like this can put on a super week, even from foundation. So there's a lot of way, a long way to go, a lot of work to do. Okay, just clean up what we've got now. A few supers to pick up. I am tired out. Last time I was here, I had two helpers and we didn't get didn't get to do the work. Today I've got no helpers. I had to do all the work. That's just the way it goes. A few more bits and pieces to clean up. But uh I'll not bother tire you with that. So, honey flow is on. If you haven't got any supers on, get them on. Remember, 70 to 80% full, it's time for the next box to go on. Mite treatments, the samples I've indi are indicating that they're we're on schedule to keep in July sometime, but uh, normally it's the end of July. I wouldn't be surprised if it's earlier in July, but samples will tell us when we need to, need to treat for mites. I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. See you next time, after I've been in the pool for an hour or two.